Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker. Today I'm doing a deck upgrade for the Timey Wimey Commander deck. This deck is pretty good. It has a pretty good price tag on it for everything that's included, which is really nice. And this features the 9th through the 11th Doctors. So you have a kind of a wide range. You basically have, you know, three commanders that you can kind of use in this deck. And uh, it's actually quite, quite good. You know, I took a look through it and it really took me a while to figure out, you know, what cards do I really not want to play? But there was a couple that I just thought didn't really fit the theme and could be removed. So starting out, you know, the first three cards I cut were an island, mountain, and plains. They ended up adding 37 lands into this deck, which isn't terrible, but there's also eight mana rocks. Okay, so why do you need 37 lands and 8 mana rocks? I understand that the commander of this deck, you know, he has an activated ability that costs 7, but I'm sure you're going to get there before turn 7. This just seems way too much. In addition to that, I di also did remove Mind Stone because I thought, you know, you have 8 or 9 mana rocks. Why do you need this other one? And as we'll see, I'm going to add in some other mana rocks that I think are better and work better with this deck. But that was really it mana wise. Now I want to take a look at some of the other cards. So first is Idris Soul of the TARDIS. Legendary creature, human, invocation, with vanishing three. Imprint, when it enters the battlefield, exile another artifact you control until it leaves the battlefield. It has all activated abilities and triggered abilities of exiled card and gets plus X plus X where X is the exiled card's mana value. I can definitely see you building a deck where this is really good. Unfortunately, the biggest mana rock or, you know, artifact we had in this deck was four mana and it's wedding rings, which I don't really see why you would want this basically wedding rings. I, I really don't see the point of this card. I can definitely see in a is it artifact deck, this is going to be just incredible. But as it is, I don't see why this card really fits in this deck at all. Our next card is Jenny Generated Anomaly for two, a red and a white. Ledger Creature Time Lord Soldier Double Strike. When Jenny deals combat damage to a player, it explores. Same thing kind of similar to Idris. I don't really see how Jenny fits in this deck. I, I understand there are some really cool triggers and combat stuff that happens in this deck, but I don't think that Jenny is going to actually be that helpful. You know, a four mana double striking two three isn't that bad. You know, if you can equip something to it, make it a little bit bigger, it's a serious threat. But as it is right now, I really don't see the point in having Jenny in the deck. Uh, otherwise, you know, I think Jenny would be a super fun card to add in a double striking deck or, you know, when you care about attacking. Um, but other than the explore triggers you're getting, you know, Jenny kind of sits out there and maybe is a good attacker or blocker, but really doesn't do anything for the synergy of this deck. Next up is Martha Jones, a legendary creature human cleric. Woman who walked the earth when Martha Jones enters the battlefield, investigate. When you sack a clue, Martha Jones and up to one other target creature you control can't be blocked this turn and she is a doctor's companion. Now this is a card I think is really neat. I think that, you know, giving your stuff unblockable is super great. In the case of Jenny, you know, if Jenny was also on the board, I would totally say, oh, these two cards go together. This is perfect. Let's play them. But the fact that you have to create a bunch of, you know, these clue tokens that you're not really making this deck. There's only a couple of cards that really make it. And they were so few, actually, I just removed them because it didn't seem like they belonged at all. So that's why Martha Jones is getting cut. Uh, no other reason. I think she's cool. You know, she's a doctor's companion, but just really didn't work in this deck. Next is Sally Sparrow, two white blue legendary creature human detective. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. Okay, that's pretty great. Whenever one or more other creatures you control leave the battlefield, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. So Sally is kind of one of the only, if not really the only clue token generator in this deck. I think she's really, really powerful giving you flash. I think she's great because, you know, as your stuff leaves, you get to make these clue tokens and it's once each turn. So it doesn't have to be on your turn. It could be on your opponent's turn. I'm getting rid of all of those clue token cards because there's really no point in my opinion to having those. They don't really help you progress the game, maybe help you filter through your stuff, but I think you're already going to be doing so much that that's not going to be necessary. So the next card I'm going to talk about, I'm going to combine them together because they are partners. We have Amy Pond and Rory Williams, and I think this is a cool pair, but I don't really think that it fits great how the deck is set up. So Amy Pond, 
partner with Roy Williams. Whenever Amy Pond deals combat damage to a player, choose a suspended card you own and remove that many time counters from it. She's a doctor's companion. I think Amy Pond is an excellent card. I think that's a very cool ability. I think that that, you know, could work very, very well. But she's a three mana two two. So unless you can give her some evasion, which there isn't any in this deck, except the one I removed, Martha Jones, she's kind of pointless. You know, I see she's really cool because you can help speed up the, you know, amount of time it takes you to get those cards back. But otherwise, I really don't see the point in her. Rory Williams, on the other hand, partners with Amy Pond. First Strike and Lifelink, pretty good for a 3-3 three, three. for two mana. That's incredible. The last Centurion, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than Exile, exile it with three time counters on it. It gains a spend, then investigate. Okay, so Rory is cool because obviously the other co-commander of this deck is Rose Tyler. And Rose Tyler cares about cards have time or suspended counters on them. Very, very cool. Rory kind of fits that bill. But by the time, let's say you cast this on turn two and you have to wait three turns at a minimum to get this. On turn five, you're getting a first strike lifelink 3-3 creature. And at that point, I don't think he's really that valuable to your board. At turn two, he's incredible. I would love to play this card in a bunch of decks. At turn five, I really wouldn't be that happy to play this card. So that's kind of the way I see it. You know, you're not really cheating it out, you know, because you're paying a white and a blue still to cast this, and then it goes into suspend unless you cast it from suspend. So I really don't like either of these cards, how they work in this deck, and, and maybe there's a better setup for this, but for right now, it just doesn't work. My next up card is Clock Spinning. This is a one mana, it's a blue, single blue instant with buyback three. Choose a counter on target permanent or suspend card. Remove that counter from that permanent or card or put another one of those counters on it. I will get into way better cards than this in my additions because I really didn't like how this works. So buyback three, meaning that you can cast it, paying an additional three to bounce it back to your hand, basically, which is really cool. But it's four mana to remove one counter or add one counter. I highly doubt that this card is going to be worth including in your deck. First off, there's only like one of these cards that they included in the deck. So it's not like you have a bunch of these and you're kind of depending on it. This is like a, you know, Hail Mary, you know, please, this is exactly what I need kind of card. You're probably not going to pull this. I just took this right out because your commander for seven mana time travels for three. So does this but for everything and you can add or subtract counters which is really great so basically if you buy back to this twice you'd be paying more mana than your commander and it's just it's not a good card please if you're playing this just remove it i don't see this being any good in this deck you know other than the you know one percent of chances so next up is astrid peth one in a white legendary creature human when she enters a battlefield or attacks create a food token brand new sky whenever you sack a clue or food astrid peth explores again i think this is cool for a 2-2 you know when she enters or attacks you make a food i can see this being really great in a food deck you know that cares about that and you can sack that clue or food to explore to get her bigger all of those work very well all of that's very cool but how does that really work in this deck we don't really have anything where we're sacking a lot of artifacts to you know this kind of focuses around suspend and all kinds of cards vanishing food and clue don't work in this deck you know other than maybe they gave you a little bit of life and i think this is the only thing in this deck that makes you food so i don't really really see the purpose of having this it's kind of a I don't know why they included it in this deck it is cool I can definitely see this going in a food deck because entering and attacking and then potential to get bigger so I really like that but as it is right now I wouldn't play it next is the Pandorcia and I'm sorry if I say that wrong I just can't figure out how to say this but it's a legendary artifact that says you may choose to not untap the Pandorcia during your untap step for one and a white tap untap another target non-land permanent then it phases out it can't phase in for as long as the Pandorcia remains tapped. When the Pandorcia becomes untapped or leaves the battlefield, that permanent phases in. Activate only as a sorcery. I kind of understand what's going on here, and we have a lot of cards, and including cards that they also put in the deck, that kind of do this, but a lot better. You know, this is kind of one of those, uh, you know, flexible, I'm gonna remove something from the game kind of cards, except you're spending five mana to remove one thing from the game. Grasp of Fate, which they put in this deck already, removes three things and is only three mana until it leaves the battlefield so it's not as flexible because you can have something phase back in but i really don't see the purpose of having this card it's not really the best version um so i i don't really like it and lastly the last card i chose to remove is fractured identity it's a sorcery with exile target non-land permanent each player other than its controller creates a token that's a copy of it as far as the removal goes in this deck there really isn't any which is kind of a pain and i i added a little bit but 
you know, you could probably argue that there should be a lot more of uh, removal put in this deck. But the worst part about this removal is if your opponent has something that's really powerful and you want to destroy it. Okay, great. You get a copy, but also each player gets a copy. So what's the point in that? You got rid of it one time, but now you're giving away two of them. And yeah, you're getting one, but I don't see this being a card worth including in this deck. It's a lot of mana for a not really good removal that also gives your other opponents that, and it's just worth taking out but now i want to talk about the new cards i'm adding in so i removed 14 in their total you know i was going to try and do 10 like the command zone does but i was kind of looking through the deck and i'm like you know what there's actually some more i'd like to remove and uh, kind of you know fix this deck up as good as i can so starting out i have the gargadon it is a seven mana creature beast with trample and suspend four for one in a red this is probably going to get suspended out much quicker because of your commander and all the other cards in this deck so i think kind of a big trample threat you don't really have any big threats in this deck you kind of you have a couple but not as many as you would like you know we have dinosaurs on spaceship which is super great and there's a lot of other cards but they're not really as big you know as this is and this is going to enter and it's going to be a threat and uh, i really like that about it but next up we have joyra's time bug an artifact creature insect with tap choose target permanent you control or suspended card you own if that permanent or card has a time counter on it you may remove a time counter from it or put another time counter on it i love joyra i love insects this is just such a fun card that I get to include in this deck. You know, it basically will let you remove or add a counter, similarly to the clock spinning, except this is just a tap ability. You don't have to pay four mana to get to do this every turn. So this is a much better version. I really like this. And uh, next up, we have Rift Bolt. It's one of the, you know, kind of essential suspend cards that, you know, a lot of people actually play because it just suspend one. So on your next turn, you'll get to use it. So Rose Tyler, if you ever out, we get to take advantage of this being suspended and the next turn you get to bolt something so not that bad next up is kind of a really fun card i didn't expect to find but it's called rift elemental for a single red mana creature elemental with one in a red remove a time counter from a permanent you control or suspend card you own rift em elemental gets plus two plus zero until end of turn in addition to just making this absolutely massive you can just pay two mana to remove time counters from permanents you control this seems excellent in this deck you know obviously we'd like a better rate than having to pay one in a red and there's a card later on i'll show you that has that but just being able to remove you know some time counters maybe make everything even and then you know they all tick down on the same turn or you can kind of stagger it however you want i think this is great and it makes a giant threat you know if somebody's not ready you can do this into response to after blockers are declared and remove a bunch of stuff deal a ton of damage with it so i think having a turn one play like this is kind of really cool and there wasn't as many one drops and or two drops in the deck that i as i would like so i really like this inclusion that i have next is another card i think i'm going to mispronounce here but it's called epo charisite it is a two mana artifact creature construct epo charisite enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it if you didn't cast it from your hand when epo charisite dies exile it with three time counters on it and it gains suspend so what i like about this card is first off you're just getting a little blocker out on turn two you know it's not going to enter with those three plus one plus one counters on it but every time it dies it's just going to keep coming back again and again and again giving you all of those triggers with the suspend making it bigger whenever it comes back you know buffing up rose tyler so i think i really like this it's kind of a card you can't get rid of it's just going to get better and better as time goes on and you're just going to keep getting value off of it similarly to our next card sinister concierge this is a cool card from the Nuka Benedix that I had no idea was even created. But for one in a blue creature, human wizard, when Sinister Concierge dies, you may exile it and put three time counters on it. If you do, exile up to one target creature and put three time counters on it. Each card exiled this way that doesn't have suspend gains suspend. We talked about removal, exiling something, and this is kind of a way better version of it. In addition to just getting this thing out there and all of these same things that the last card I just talked about gives us, we kind of get to remove something temporarily as well i really love this card i think this is so cool it's going to keep coming back we can use it as a blocker you know keep removing stuff so that is very very cool next is joyra of the gitu legendary creature human wizard to exile a non-land card from your hand put four time counters on it if it doesn't have suspend it gains suspend so this is kind of a card that i know it's not on flavor so they didn't include joyra because she's a named you know legendary creature but she is the perfect card for this deck you know joyra 
used to be a really, really powerful commander and kind of fell off because people weren't playing her as much. But I think she's going to hit a resurgence now with all of the really cool cards that we are getting. In addition, she just gives anything suspend, you know, making our deck even better. So I really love this card. I'm really excited to see it. And uh, I know that this is going to be a powerhouse. Next up is Time Crafting. And this is the really cool removal card that I think is just so much better than everything else they have to offer. So Time Crafting is X in a red. Instant choose one. Remove X time counters from target permanent or suspend card or put X time counters on target permanent with a time counter on it or suspend counter on it. So if you, you know, are in the late game, you need to get something onto the battlefield, but it has, you know, 10 time counters on it and you're waiting for it to resolve. This is your card. It's not the best because you still have to pay a ton of mana dumping into it, but there's no better card that I found that does this. You know, if you need something, you're going to get it. Or if you want to put a bunch of time counters on something, dump all your mana into it and do it. But I think this is kind of going to be really versatile and it's way more mana efficient than clock spinning ever could possibly be. Next up, we have Heroes Remembered, which is a nine drop sorcery that says you gain 20 life and it has suspend 10 for one white mana. So if you make it to turn 10, guess what? You get a 20 life gain boost, which is pretty good. But if you don't, guess what? You get to have all the benefits of having this card in suspend and all of the stuff that your deck cares about, making it get out faster and faster. So I think just one mana gain 20 life is pretty good. Next up, we have Soul Talisman. It's suspend three for one mana and we can tap it to add two so it's basically a soul ring that's what it's named after soul and just getting to pay one mana put on suspend three and get two mana later on is pretty great you know it's good turn one it's good later in the game if we can play this and then activate our commander's ability timey wimey it's gonna just instantly enter the battlefield so i really like that and similarly we have lotus bloom which is just a black lotus you know in our deck like i said if we can also just pay the seven mana it's gonna enter we can sacrifice it three mana of any one color to our mana pool this is a really cool card you know if we're playing the face of bow that says you know you can just pay whatever you would pay and cast it inst without having to do suspend this is just a black lotus which is banned in commander because it is so power next up we have wheel of fate a sorcery with suspend for one in a red each player discards their hand then draw seven cards it's just a wheel of fortune we love this card you know anybody who can afford it and play it loves playing it it's just gonna help you refill your hand get you some more suspend cards so i really like it similarly we have ancestral visions ancestral visions is blue it has suspend four for a single blue and target player draws three cards this is created after ancestral recall it is a really really fun card you know whether you wait the four turns to draw three or if with faith's bow you do it earlier or any of your other ways to do it earlier it's just going to be awesome and the last card i'm adding is mox tantalite an artifact with suspend three for zero and can tap to add one mana of any color. This is just going to help us mana fix. And like I said, I removed a couple of lands and that mana rock because, you know, what I had in this deck was better. But this is my suggestion. These are the four cards I would include. And those come to a total of $23. So not too bad. You know, the most expensive addition is this Mox Tantalite. Ancestral Visions and Wheel of Fate are both below $4 and everything else is, you know, kind of pennies after that. But, you know, what do you think? Was this a good upgrade? Did you think that, uh, the cards I included was good? Do you think the cards I removed were reasonable? You know, was there another card in this deck that you just, you know, have looked through and gone, why in the world would you keep this in here? This is terrible. You know, I'd love to hear about that in the comments down below. This is the first one of these I'm doing. So if you enjoyed it, you know, and, and you made it to the end, please tell me. I would really like to see you. Hey, I watched it through the end. I liked it. I didn't like it. It helps me go further in the future, whether I decide, you know, how I'm going to go at these. Am I going to do the same sort of format or am I going to change it up? So thank you so so much and if you aren't subscribed to my channel please do so i just hit my one year mark last week and i'm just real excited to dive into some to some new ideas and videos and just you know another great year so thank you thank you again and uh if you want to help me out in another way you know please leave a like on this video and share it with a friend you know the more people i can get this out to the more views i'm going to get and uh the faster i'm going to grow and i would really just really appreciate that thank you so so much but today's scryfall card of the day is ferment sage the cause remained unclear but the fact was undeniable nights were lengthened faster than in any autumn past thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you later planeswalkers